Hello and welcome to another video, I'm Everett Hoffman, and today I'm going to introduce probably the most underrated piece of equipment in my camera bag, and that is an intervalometer. Now when I bought my first camera way back in the day, this was probably the first piece of gear that I added to my arsenal, and I only bought this because I wanted to make a time-lapse video, and I didn't want to sit there and press the shutter button over and over and over and over again and risk moving the camera or have my timing inconsistent, so I did some internet digging and I found an intervalometer. Now an intervalometer isn't just used for time-lapse videos, it has other functions too. Okay, so what is an intervalometer used for? An intervalometer is used to measure short intervals at a time. So basically you just plug this into your camera and then you can control how often, how long, and how many photos your camera is going to take. And you can do this without having to touch your camera. So how do you use an intervalometer? Some of them have different features, but most of them operate the same way. So first you have to either put batteries in your intervalometer and turn it on with an on and off button, but some of them don't have an on and off button. So the second you put your batteries in, it's just gonna stay on until your batteries run out or you take the batteries out. In my case, it does not have an on and off button, so I have AAA batteries in here and it's just gonna stay on. So next, you have to plug it into your camera. Now you don't have to have your camera turned on for you to adjust your intervalometer settings, but you do have to have the camera turned on when you want to control the camera with the intervalometer and take your photos. So first you have delay. And what this does is it allows you to set a timer before you take the photo. So just like any typical camera, you usually have a three second to 10 second timer. And if you're the person taking the photo, you can press the button and then run to get in the photo. So the delay is the same thing, it's just beefed up. So say you wanna take a photo of the sunrise, but you don't wanna get up that early to take the photo. Well, you can set your delay to take the photo when the sun comes up. You just have to do a little math to see how many hours you have to set your delay to, so it takes the photos when the sun comes up. So every interface is going to be a bit different. And in my case, mine has a solid line indicating which menu I am under. So if you look at the top, it is currently under delay, and I can move it over to long, interval, number, and sound. Now let's go back to delay. So in delay, we have a series of zeros. And what this indicates is time. This is going to be hours, minutes, and seconds. So if I want to set an eight hour timer, then I would go through and click set. And if you notice that the first set of zeros is blinking, and that's indicating that I am editing that field. I can move it over and I'll be editing minutes. And then I can also go over and edit seconds. But we wanna set an eight hour timer. So let's go ahead and go back to hours and click up on the arrow key until we get to eight. Now, once we have that, I can click set to set that timer. So if I hit start and stop, then it's going to count down my eight hours. And once those eight hours are up, it's gonna tell my camera to take a photo. So since we don't have that kind of time, Let's go ahead and change that eight hour timer down to seconds and we'll do five seconds. Now, when I press the start stop button, it's going to count down five seconds and it's gonna tell my camera to take a photo. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like whenever I press the start button now. Okay, so now that delay is out of the way, let's move on to long. Now long indicates how long are we exposing a single photo, which means how long are we keeping that shutter open, exposing our image sensor until that shutter closes. So for example, if I wanted to take a three hour long exposure photo, then I would go into my long settings and I would click set, and then I would change that first set of zeros up to three, and then I would click set again to lock in that time, and then I would click start, and then my photo would begin taking a three hour long exposure of a photo, and then it would stop taking that photo after that three hours is up. But since we don't have that time, let's go ahead and change that three hours down to zero, 
and we'll move over to seconds and we can take a 10 second photo. So let's go ahead and move that up there to 10 seconds. Okay, now that I'm at 10 seconds, once I press the start stop button, then my camera is going to begin taking a photo for 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and press that now. And now that 10 second photo is done. Okay, so next we have interval. Now interval is going to indicate the amount of time that passes from the end of one photo to the beginning of the next photo. And this is displayed just like everything else. You have your hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's go ahead and click set, and then we'll navigate over to the seconds portion, and we'll go up to five. And then we'll click set once we get there. So now my camera is gonna take a photo every five seconds. So for me to display this, I need to move over to the number section and all the number section does is say, hey, I wanna take a photo for this many photos. So right now it's set to one. Now my intervalometer only goes from one to 399 photos, but if I click set and I click down, then I get that double dash icon. That means I'm going to get an infinity amount of photos until my memory card fills up. So let's leave it at double dashed for now, and then I'll move back over to interval. So once again, our interval is set to five seconds at infinity amount of photos. So if I click the start and stop button, then my camera is gonna take a photo every five seconds. So let's go ahead and press that button now. Okay, so now let's combine everything that we've learned. So let's grab our intervalometer and we'll set our delay to 15 seconds. So let's go all the way up to 15 seconds and we will click set once we get there. And we'll change our long to 10 seconds. So we'll be taking a 10 second photo. And then we'll change our interval to five seconds. So we have a five second interval between each photo and then we can change our number up to three for the number of photos. So whenever I press the start button, we are going to wait 15 seconds, and then our camera is going to take a 10 second photo, and then it's going to wait for five seconds, and then it's going to take its second 10 second photo, then it's gonna wait for another five seconds, then it's gonna take its third and final 10 second photo, and then the process will be complete. So let's go ahead and grab our camera, and let's press the start button now. So we should be counting down from 15 seconds. Let's see what we're at. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And now we're starting our first 10 second photo. Two, one. First 10 seconds photo is done, and now we're waiting for five seconds. And now we're into our second 10 second photo. Two, one. Now we're waiting for another five seconds. And now we're into our third and final 10 second photo. And now the process is complete and we've taken three 10 second photos with five seconds in between. Now there is one more feature to this intervalometer and that is the ability to act as a remote shutter. So if I have my camera set up and I don't want to move it by pressing this shutter button on the camera, I can always plug this thing in and press this button here and it's going to take the photo for me. So if I press it, it just takes the photo. So there's one more pro tip and that is the hold feature. So I would make sure that you buy an intervalometer that has a hold feature. 
So if your camera has a bulb setting, which the bulb setting is just a long exposure setting, that if you hold the shutter button down, it's going to take a photo for as long as the shutter button is held down. Now what this hold feature does is I can press this and slide it up and it's going to act as I'm holding the shutter button down and it's gonna take that photo for as long as the hold button is held down. And it's gonna look like this. You can press it down and then push it up. So once I do that, it's going to hold that shutter down for as long as I want. So that way I can leave. I don't have to touch the camera. I can go get some coffee. I can just let it sit there and chill and take that photo. And it's gonna do that until I come back, press it down and remove it. And now the photo is gonna be complete. So those are the benefits of having an intervalometer. As you can see, this is a pretty powerful tool to have. And I think everyone should have one of these. They're relatively inexpensive. I picked this one up for around 20 bucks and that was forever ago. And I've had this same exact one and it's never failed me. So if you have any questions about intervalometers, let me know in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Skiddly bop that bell to be notified when I post another video. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one.